Mailbag time. Let's see what's in these packages today. Right, let's get to the first thing. There will probably be links down below for various items. So if you want to know more information, you go and check those links out. In the description, which you now have to click on more twice. So you've got show more down there somewhere. And then once you click on that, you have to put show no more again down there. You have to click twice now. Let's click on it twice now because YouTube changes systems and now you have to show more twice. More is more. more. What else is this? Oh, right, okay. Excellent. It's a little DC filter. So what you do is you put DC in one side and you get DC out the other side and it's been filtered through these inductors with these capacitors as well. This is used to try and get rid of noise from like switching power supplies and stuff like that. So if you've got a noisy power supply, which most people do have noisy power supplies, and they're trying to quieten them down and give a cleaner supply output, you can put the input from that power supply on this side, and at this side you get a cleaner signal. So these are really, really cheap to get. I, mean, I was going to build something. I was thinking, oh, no, you know, I could, I could design something and make a PCB and you know mess around with all that stuff. I could have done that easily and got it exactly what I wanted. Or I could just buy some pre-made boards off AliExpress, which is what these are. Yeah, I bought another one previously, which is different, but this is the one I wanted to use is this one because it's this can take I think it was three amps or five amps or something like that. I can't remember exactly now. But um, I've got a whole bunch of these little switching power supplies, like the one which is running my camera right now. That's actually quite a noisy power supply. I've got lots of ferrites on the output cables from that to try and quiet it down. Lots of EMI and RFI coming off that cable and off the actual camera. And also my lighting as well is also really bad for emitting noise. So I want to put some of these on all my switch mode power supplies, which run my studio stuff basically, and try and quieten all those down. If I can get those quietened down, I should get less noise on the oscilloscope when I'm trying to do sensitive measurements. Because that's one of the things which has really bugged me for ages, is trying to get rid of that noise. So definitely links down below for those filters. I recommend you get some. Alright, okay. Now, I purchased these and I realised not long ago that I probably should have purchased something different for this. Why do always have to wrap it in plastic? Try and untangle it. This is coming from a big reel. So this is how metal is punched out. So these are obviously ring terminals. Okay, so you can see this is basically in a big long line. This comes off a reel. It actually comes in big rolls of these things and I just break them off. So this is 50 of these I purchased. I think there's gold plate, I'm not sure. It could have be brass. There might be gold plate, I'm not too sure actually. Never actually look at the specs, but they look quite nice, so I thought I'd get some. Look pretty sturdy. So how do they actually make these? So it's basically on a big roll, a big coil of flat metal, right? So it's like a metal bar, right? Flat metal, but it's usually quite thin, you know, the thickness of this, whether that is probably one millimetre or so, I suppose. Be that thick, and probably, you know, that kind of width, probably, most likely, but on a big coil of it, just rolled up, and they'll be unrolling that out, and they'll run it through a metal press machine and it will punch it out and form it at the same time and it will just step through, it's going to punch, 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 punch so it's probably doing the, the punching one step and the forming of this on the next step so the first step will be punching the outline and probably the centre hole and that could be a second step actually, even a third step maybe um, so I could just do the outline first, then the centre hole and then it will form it so it will be going through flat and then it will get formed most likely, I mean, it could be two or three steps, but basically, as they're feeding it through the machine, it will just, just be stepping through, like you know, like that. Right. So each time it punches, it just steps through. It's probably videos on YouTube about it, actually. You go have a look, but um, it's quite interesting. My presence, in a way, if you're interested in manufacturing processes. So yeah, I'm just looking at that, I can see how they made it. Lovely. Anyway, it's ring terminals. What else can you say about them, really? I actually planned these. So I'll start off my tangent. <laughs> I've got this Teflon wire here which I was going to use for doing test instrument setups. So I put on my um, do I want to do more precision measurements. But then I realised that these are ring terminals, right? And well they're probably not the best thing. Because really I need fault terminals, not ring terminals. Because you can't always put ring terminals on. Anyway, I've got some now. I might have to cut the end off or something to make them a fault terminal. Yeah. Something from Amazon Prime. And I've heard something, I don't know what it was. What did I buy? Uh, 
Oh, no, but okay. This is a replacement printer roller pickup thing for the Brother HL L6200 DW. Covers a bunch of different models, actually. Yeah, does a bunch of different models. So when I actually looked for these previously, they actually had them out of stock. They weren't in stock. You're not getting one from AliExpress. Actually, I took a while to get one from AliExpress because um, the first one disappeared, never turned up. And I purchased another one, which did turn up eventually. It took a, about two or three months before it actually arrived, if I remember rightly. Anyway, this is apparently a brand new one. So this is the actual pickup roller, which looks fine. And this is the pad which goes into the side so basically the roller works against the pad inside the printer to pick up bits of paper anyway so yeah so I've got brand new ones excellent because um, the pad on the printer I've got now is looking quite worn we have had some times where it doesn't pick up the paper nicely I've cleaned it with YPA and that sort of stuff and it's been behaving since then but I can see that it's getting worn and I so I did buy one of these already but I always like to have a spare so once I've used that one, I still need to have another one to use in another couple of years' time. Because it's a really good printer, it works really well. So I want to keep the thing going. So, pick up rollers. Also, don't forget to click like and subscribe. If you haven't been here before, you want to subscribe and see my other videos. Obviously not just mailbag videos, but I do lots of other things too. Electronic repairs and things like that. I think people generally like. Well, it's in here somewhere. I've got to find it. Here, it's just in that bit. <laughs> there we go. I wish I'd use a smaller bag. I think that's all of it. Yeah. So I've got some of these previously, and these are basically little rubber plugs. Just little bungs that go into 3.5mm jacks. So these are measured 3.8mm, and I found that's the best size. I've tried a few different sizes out, I've purchased a few different sizes, and tried them out on these particular things they're going into. And therefore, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, basically, but it's actually being used as a digital signal control line. This 3.8 millimeter size works really well for those to plug those up. So if you want to try and keep them clean, or you know, to stop dirt getting into them when they're not being used, this sort of stuff, then these things, 3.8 mil. Now, but this big beast, I'm not quite sure what's in this one. It could be hard to get into too because all of the tape on it everywhere. Let's see. Two hours later. It's even taped on the there too. Awesome. One eternity later. It's an instrument case. Okay, phone line's got a phone topping in here. And it's got this mesh which has got like a pre-cut. See that kind of lasered slots inside it? You see that? And you basically just cut it out to the shape you want. And this one removable, it is. Bottom line's done the same, yes it is. Also removable, and we've got the, a thinner section here as well. So it means you can just customise this to suit whatever equipment you want to put into it. There's a top one glued in, no it's just sitting in there, so that's also removable. So you can change this to be whichever way around you want to use it. Um, I actually have some instruments that I'd want to put in this. I'm hoping I can get six in here. I don't know if I can get six in here yet or not. In theory, I should be able to. The sizing was quite close. I did try and get a six in. I think it will just go. So it's got this lip around here that goes into this channel on this side, but there's no rubber seal on it, so it's not actually waterproof. There's no rubber seal on there. So um, I'm not wasn't too worried about waterproof anyway. It's the sort of thing I would not keep in the rain anyway, so it wouldn't really matter. Um, if you really wanted to, I suppose you could get some kind of rubber strip or something and put it in there. And use that because they're not really too worried. It feels like quite a nice case actually. Nice and robust clamps. I put some other ones before which were like a skinny, long, skinny version. Not this particular style, but a different style. And those have been okay, but they weren't the best build quality. They're quite flimsy and they, sort of, they did have like a water resistant rating on them. Because they do have rubber seals on them. But because they aren't actually that thick, the plastic's quite thin on it means that um, they tend to bend slightly and so you don't have to get water resistance on them at all, really. But they were quite a nice case, I'm still using them now, still fine. But uh, they were cheap. This was not cheap, 
I think it was about 50 or 60 bucks this thing, something like that. And it's got this thing here, I've no idea what that's for. Is that a vent? It's not a vent. What is this thing? That's what it looks like on the front. It looks a bit like a vent, but on the back it's a solid bolt. It's all solid on the back, it's just recessed. I don't know what the hell that's for. Why? It must have some purpose. Don't forget to check out the links down below for other videos, maybe other MRI bags, other repairs, reviews on electronic test equipment, that kind of stuff, whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye.